Are you looking for a job in cybersecurity but feeling overwhelmed with the job postings that you're seeing? Does it feel like the job posting is more of a dream sheet than a realistic job posting? In this video, I'm going to show you a job posting that I found relatively recently that showed up on Indeed and really pulls back the curtain on the discussions that companies are having when they're trying to find their perfect match. This is one video that you don't want to miss. This is the job posting that I want to review. It is for a senior information security engineer, Active Defense. It was for CenturyLink in Phoenix, Arizona, and this was listed on Indeed. So let's go ahead and go through this here. So responsible for operating and maintaining security technologies in pursuit of an active defense program, pretty generic bullet. The senior role will assist with transformation of our security products in addition to handling day-to-day -day operations, support via trouble ticketing. Pretty generic kind of things here. Uh, typically with senior level roles or as you go up in the organization, you're gonna start seeing things like mentoring other members or training other people because that's just part of it. The more responsibility you have, the higher level role you have, you're gonna be expected to do things like this. So keep that in mind. It's not just for management. It would be if you went to like a mid-level because they might expect you to help out the entry-level people. Senior level, that's gonna help out the mid-level and the entry-level people. And then obviously leads or management level, that's gonna you know, take on other responsibilities and of more roles as well. So keep that in mind. Candidates should have a familiarity with host and network security hardening, network protocols, common intrusion techniques, and risk management concepts, pretty generic kind of bullets. Engineer will respond, respond to, remediate, and document operational and maintenance incidents, not limited to alerts, tickets, emails, phone calls. Uh, let's see here. Actively maintain all defense-related documentation procedures. Honestly, this whole thing is pretty generic, this whole description. Well, not pretty generic. It's very generic. So, you know, it, it, it's not as fun when it's like very generic like that because it doesn't give you as much insight as far as like what they're actually looking for for the job posting. But let's keep reading. So technology focus, secure access, VPNs, multi-factor authentication, familiarity with AAA, experience with DLP. Again, not listing specific technologies. Keep that in mind, right? That's an important distinction. They're not listing specific technologies and you don't have to have a specific vendor experience in there. I keep scrolling down here, robust knowledge of modern and legacy Linux and Windows systems. Keep scrolling down. This is where it starts getting interesting. So three to five years of hands-on system administration experience, okay? Typically, if you're gonna see mandatory requirements like that or specific things like that, a lot of times they do actually want that. It's not always the case, right? Sometimes you might see it more generically put. So three to five years of experience. It's like, well, experience in what? And so when it's generic like that, they don't always have an idea of what they're actually looking for. They're just like, well, we know we need somebody with experience. Like, okay, that doesn't help people that are looking for jobs, but it is an important thing to consider when you see it. So let's keep reading here. Understanding of modern industry security standard frameworks and uh, guidelines. Okay, that's pretty generic. Understanding of modern legacy scripting languages, Bash, Python, Perl, C, inspect question mark. Nathan, I understand CSAC scripts are inspect now, but could these be any standard modern scripting language or are we tied to inspect for some reason? Interview question. So that's an important point here is when you see a group of technologies or a group of qualifications, characteristics, things like that, typically if you have at least one of them, you're in pretty decent shape. Because a lot of times when they list a whole bunch, they're not necessarily looking for a specific one. They might be modernizing what they have. They might be just looking for somebody who brings other skills to the table and can help them kind of think outside of the box that they've been in. So there's a lot of different reasons for that. But also when you talk about the interview question, you might be asked in an interview about something, for instance, about Bash or Python, like a specific question towards that. but can't let's say you don't have the experience in that let's say it's about uh python but you don't have python experience but you have bash experience or powershell experience or something like that where it's a related question about scripting how can you tie that experience to what they're actually asking for either in the job posting or in the interview those are really important um things to understand and be able to do because you might not have experience with specifically what they're asking for 
but you can tie it to what they're asking for and you can actually find a solution or still accomplish what they're trying to get, right? Like what they're trying to accomplish. So really important and really kind of helps get you into the mindset of somebody who is creating this post or listing this job. Now let's keep going here. Modern professional experience and information technology or security relevant experience, pretty generic. Radius protocol experience, very generic stuff. Uh, when they list specific technologies again, typically that's because they have that technology in their environment. Maybe they're looking for somebody with that specific experience. That's definitely a relevant reason why somebody would list a specific technology. But that is not always a disqualifying factor in a candidate. You could have similar experience with a similar technology but not the specific one that they're asking for. A lot of times with technology, for instance, like SIM tools. So like Splunk, Logarithm, you know, they act very similar. They have very similar characteristics. You do basically the same things, but you do them a little bit differently. And so that's an important point to make is that it's not always about the specific technology. It's about the category of technology. So do you have experience with this category of technology or type of technology? And I want you to keep that in mind as you're looking at job postings, because you're going to see tools that are like enterprise grade tools that you're not going to be able to afford to get experience with, right? Especially at the entry level. But if you can find an open source alternative or something that is going to give you some experience, maybe a trial of some other similar product, then you can still bring that experience to the table. You can still talk to that experience and that hands-on activity that you've done with those kind of tools or technologies. Very important because if you just immediately disqualify yourself because they list a specific technology and you don't think about the category or the type of technology, then you're going to miss out on a ton of great opportunities where they might have just made the exception because you don't have the specific technology, but you still basically have what they're looking for. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Okay. ServiceNow Automation, not sure what to call this. <laughs> That's always interesting. But knowledge or experience with how to create service forms and APIs. I'm asking weird stuff like this because we won't find someone everything we want. Keep in mind, right? But we may find people with experience in three or four that would make it a good hire question mark. Maverick and Justin can do that, I believe. Just done, have access to it. If they mention ServiceNow, that would be a great, uh, be an added plus. I think for right now, we just need to leave it at high level. So sorry if you are the names in these, but this was on Indeed. I didn't go fishing for this, right? Like this just, I found it on Indeed and I just saved it as a PDF because I wanted to bring it up. But keep that in mind when they're asking for specific technologies, that might not not even be exactly what they need, right? Like they might just have that technology in their mind because that is either the current technology, the future technology, whatever. But again, a lot of times they are not looking necessarily at specific specific technology. They're looking at the skill set or the things that you can do in relation to that technology, right? So if you have access to service now, You've never used ServiceNow, but you've used a similar product and you've made the forms or dealt with APIs. That's basically the skill set they need. It's just a matter of the technology and getting familiar with the technology. Keep that in mind. It is 
not always about the specific technology. I can't say that enough. Bachelor's degree, telecommunications, computer science, engineering, cybersecurity related field or equivalent experience. A lot of times people, especially that are newer, they will see this part about the bachelor's degree and they will ignore this second part. Why does that matter? Well, if you don't have a degree, this is not disqualifying you. This is saying that, yeah, they would like, you know, if you had a degree or related experience. So don't automatically disqualify yourself just by reading some of a bullet and then stopping. Read the whole thing through and make sure you understand what they're actually asking for. It's just like you're taking an exam for like a CISSP or something, Security Plus, whatever. Read the full question, make sure you understand what's being asked, and then you'll have a better understanding of what the answer actually is. Familiar with security tools and concepts such as firewalls, vulnerability scanning and management, multi-factor authentication, RSA, uh, Gamalto, Microsoft, TACAX, VPN, Cisco, Any Connect, intrusion detection and prevention, blah, 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 blah. Again, this is a crazy bullet because this is like, we just want you to have experience with a bunch of tools. We don't know which tools we're actually going to need, but these are maybe some that we have in our environment, and these would be ideal. So keep in mind, it's about the category. It's great, though, if you have specific experience with the tools that they mention. Not always going to be the case, especially in some of the better jobs that you might want to get. Familiar with health monitoring tools and technology, working tech, uh, technical knowledge of networks and applications, familiar in at least one scripting language covered above. See, you have duplications here, so always be aware of that too. Sometimes you will see where there is information that's duplicated in multiple spots, and maybe it is phrased in a different way, uh, like lower, lower down in the, the job posting or in a different spot, right? And that can reveal more information about what they're looking for because maybe they forgot to take it out. I honestly don't know how this job posting got put on Indeed, but I think it's hilarious. Strong interpersonal personal and written oral communication skills, general understanding of risk-based assessment methodologies, analytical and problem-solving skills, experience in large enterprise or carrier, carrier data and or networks. So a lot of just general bullet points. You're going to see that in a lot of different job postings because Frankly, a lot of job postings are pretty generic. They're pretty general. They're not usually uh, fixated on certain things. It's more of like the category or the skill set that you can bring. Certifications, CISSP, CEH, GCIH, GPEN, GWAP, GSEC, CISM, CISA, or equivalent level certification strongly desired. So obviously you got the strongly desired phrase in here. Not required, but Typically, the more that you can have that matches the specific requirements, the better. If you have at least one of them, then you're in pretty good shape. If you have more of them, you're obviously in a little bit better shape. Network or operating system certifications, current or expired, strongly desired. So typically, when they have like a strongly desired section, it's ideal if you have what they're requesting. If you can alternatively display what they're requesting as far as that skill set through something else. So let's say you didn't have any of these certifications on network or operating systems, but you had a lot of experience with like Cisco networking gear, Windows pushing out security policies, and you displayed that within your resume, then you're probably going to fulfill that requirement, even though you don't have the certification that they're asking for. So again, it's all about reading what it says and trying to translate that into your experience. And then just the standard disclaimer kind of stuff. So again, I don't know how this job posting got put onto Indeed, but when I saw it, I was like, are you serious? Like. I can't believe some of these bullets are in here. It's just, it's very interesting to see something like this. Question of the day. If you're currently applying to jobs, which type of jobs are you applying to? If not, which type of jobs have you had the most success applying to in the past? Let me know down in the comment section below. So there you go. Kind of a funny job posting 
and you never know what you might see if you keep your eyes open. The reality is that this information can reveal a lot about what an employer is actually looking for and not just what the words say. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.